Hello again, uh, and welcome to another episode of Data Science Foundations. Um, hopefully yesterday was really exciting, or the last class was really exciting for you, uh, because we studied something that will prove to be foundational in the future. But today we're taking a little break from that, and I'm going to describe two more terms that we had heard of in the previous lecture. Um, so this is, I think, definitely the second most important acronym in statistics. This is IID. So previously, if you remember, uh, one of the important assumptions that we had in order to do uh, machine learning, this is kind of like in data science in general, is that we got uh, IID samples from a random variable X. Okay. And we talked about samples and we talked about random variables and both of those will be incredibly useful today because IID will um, specifically apply in our, our, our case to samples of a random variable. Um, so let me break this assumption down. So IID stands for independent and identically distributed. Okay, and both of these are equally important and one of them I think is a little bit easier to understand so I'm going to start with that one. So what does identically distributed mean? Um, so I, I think this is very, some people make a little bit of a, a big deal about this, but I think this is pretty easy to understand. Uh, more specifically, it means that we, we sample from the same random variable each time, or in our case, because we have uh, functions, it means we call the same function the same way each time. Uh, so in this case, these are identically distributed samples because we call the exact same function, rv1, uh, 10 times. Each of, each of these samples are identically distributed. We got them from the same function. Things that are not, so again, this is not random uh, because I've, I've used a de uh, degenerate random variable. Uh, so it's, it, feel, it might feel like cheating. Identically distributed samples do not all have to be the same number. It's just in this case. So let me show you something that's not identically distributed. Again, this should be should be pretty easy, or you should be like, Nate, this is, why did we even spend any time on this? But it's important, and I'll tell you why it's important. All right, after this example. Um, so random variable two. So with random variable two, we've got nine uh, non-identically distributed samples, and why? Uh, this is because I take a couple samples from random variable one, and then I add on a couple samples from random variable two, and then ta-da, I've got non-identically distributed samples. So some ones followed by some twos. Okay, and, this, and there's something very subtle and very important to note about this. So let's say you were sampling pigs at a farm. Okay, so you want to, you want to know the height distribution of pigs. Um, and you picked up a pig, you measured its height, and then you, you recorded it and you put it away, you picked up another pig, you, me you measured its height, you put it away, you picked up a chicken, you measured its height, you put it away, you picked up a pig, you measured it, wait, right? We picked up a chicken, that's, that's terrible. We were trying to measure pigs, that's embarrassing that you would have confused it with a chicken. Um, and that would be um, an example of, of how our assumption uh, would be violated. So, so in this case, you know, chicken is not from a population of, of pigs, so uh, it's terrible. But wait, let me, let me present to you a second um, situation. Uh, so this is a second situation. Let's say we are measuring farm animals. So we want to know the height of farm animals. Um, and you picked up a pig and you measured its height, and then you continued on, you picked up a pig, you measured its height, and you, and you continued on. You picked up a chicken, you measured its height, you continued on. There's nothing wrong with that. This, this scenario where you picked up a pig, a pig, and then a chicken, there's nothing absolutely wrong with that. Um, at specific farms, this might be incredibly likely. As long as you're picking those up randomly, right, uh, which we'll talk about later on, that you wouldn't have any problems with the assumptions that we have. But even if you weren't picking them up randomly, they'd be from the same population distribution. And that population distribution would be uh, the set of all uh, farm animals. Um, so two situations, the exact same situations, and depending on how you frame it, uh, you've got one situation which is terribly wrong, one situation which could be perfectly normal and right. So um, so why why is this an important assumption? It's, it's because this leads us to something that uh, I'll talk about quite often. You know, before you do your analysis, um, please think about what is the population you're interested in. Um, and if you need to change that population during the analysis, and we'll talk about that later on, that's fine. Just be very, be very cognizant of it. Um, okay, second assumption. Second assumption is a little bit harder, uh, and this is the independence assumption. 
let's scroll down here. So I, I always sort of disliked this uh, assumption because it's it's a little bit confusing, and I think unfortunately it's going to be a little bit more confusing without sort of like a like a probability background because some of the uh, best definitions of independence uh, to me uh, work best when you're using uh, when you when you sort of describe it using conditional probability. But anyways, let me give you an example of independence. Let me then give you a way of thinking about it afterwards. Okay, so independent one, independent two, these guys are independent. Um, independent one does not depend on any way, and independent two, and vice versa. So we can call these two random variables independent. Um, we can call samples as well independent, as long as the random variable doesn't depend on itself. Um, let me show you something that is not independent. So here we're getting not independent samples. So I've got this not independent. It takes x, which is a global variable, as defined up here. It adds plus one. It returns the value that x now holds. Um, I go ahead. I get not independent samples. So notice that I'm. These are uh, uh, these are identically distributed. And we're calling the same function again and again. No violation there. No harm. No foul there. However, because not independent is not independent, so we get not independent samples. And so you sort of see these samples, they sort of increase linearly in time. Um, and this is, one of, this is one of the big problems. So for example, uh, you know, I was looking at the, um, the sort of gun violence study that was done after the gun buyback program in Australia. Right? And one of, one of the problems there is that there's a trend. You know, previous to the gun buyback, there is a trend of decreasing gun violence. Um, and so it's very hard to extrapolate whether the, uh, the buyback actually did cause a decrease, a big drop in gun violence, or whether it would have happened naturally. And so this, this is one of these things. You, didn't you definitely didn't have independent samples uh, because the samples sort of depended on each other. You know, previous gun violence might influence the culture in a specific way that might influence gun violence in the future. Um, okay. Uh, let me let me try a little bit of a more complicated one and then, and then explain a good way to, to sort of wrap your head around what independence means. A good question to ask, hey, are my samples independent? Okay. Okay. So here we go. Um, so notice uh, that one depends on another's outcome. Um, so if I know the outcome of one random variable, it gives me information on the outcome of another random variable. Okay. So what about this guy? So not independent advanced. Um, so in this case, I go ahead, I take in a, a variable x, and then with, with probability 1%, I increment x, and I return x. So again, we've got identically distributed samples. And down here, it looks as if these samples are identically distributed as well as independent, right? They're all the same. Um, however, knowing the structure of this random variable, we know that they are dependent on each other. Because if this previous one was three, it would give us information as to what the next one would be. How so? Okay, so you might be like, okay, well, let's take a degenerate random variable. A degenerate random variable, in this case, being it returns three each time, right? If the first one was three, we would know that the second one would be three, two. So what's the difference? Well, in this case, the difference is somewhat subtle. So let's say we knew, we knew the function, not independent advantage, okay? But we did not know x in this case. Now, if we knew this function and we got a sample back that said three, right? It would give us information on what the next sample would be. Why? Because if this, this sample could have been either been three or four, right? Because it could have been three because that's sort of the initial condition or with a 1% chance it could have been four. If it were four, then my next sample would have definitely been, it could not have been three. But now, given this new information of what the actual instantiation, how the sample was called, um, I know that my next sample in this case can be three, or it could be four. Whereas previously, if I got a different value, it could have been four or five. So the question to ask yourself is, hey, does knowing a sample, as well as so I guess the first thing, you know sort of what the population looks like in general. So you know sort of the population function. 
does knowing a sample give you any extra information about what that next sample would be? If not, then these things are independent. The samples are independent. If so, they are dependent. Okay. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, this is one of the most confusing parts of the statistics. If you guys have questions on this, or if you have suggestions on, on great explanations, this is this is one of the things that I've not found a really good explanation of independence that, that I personally like. So if you guys have a great uh, suggestion on what a good example is, please shoot them down below in the comments. Um, and I will, I will look at them and I will, and perhaps if there's really good ones, I might even re-record this video. Uh, because I, I really, I kind of, I still don't feel super comfortable with my definition of independence. Okay, let me explain why this matters and then I'll go ahead and, and show you the comprehension questions. So this matters for, uh, you know, the one major reason that our assumptions rely on these two, um, uh, uh, I guess these two subsequent assumptions quite heavily. If we don't have IID, we need to change the way that we do our analysis. Now, I'm not going to be showing you the way that you need to change the way uh, that you do your analysis in this class because you know currently the class is already really full of material um, but it is something to sort of be explored later on and certainly people people do this so indep independence is of course violated in all time series analysis right and so you need to choose a very particular way of choosing your samples um, uh, identically distributed is a little bit harder so this is I guess this would kind of be in the idea of domain adaptation um, or something like that where you're trying to take information from one population distribution and, and, and sort of throw it onto another uh, population distribution. Anyways, these assumptions are pretty crucial unless you're doing some fairly arcane uh, variants of, of statistics and machine learning. And I guess time series learning is, is not that arcane, but you know. So anyways, so we need these assumptions for that reason. Um, okay. So, uh, the learning objectives today, I hope you guys understand what IID means now. Uh, so, it's independent, identically samples. Hopefully, identically samples is very clear and independent. Hopefully, it's as clear as can be. And then, of course, I've gotten some uh, comprehension questions. So, as always, if you've been here before, you know the spiel. Uh, feel free to answer one of the comprehension questions down below in a comment. I'll let you know uh, what I think after you've answered it. If you see someone else that has answered it in a, in a very similar way to you, just go ahead and give them a thumbs up. Um, no need to just sort of repeat the same answer multiple times. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yes, we will get to machine learning eventually, but these are really important things. So thanks for sticking with it.